Good morning and welcome to the Empowering Women series. My name is Pia McAdams. I'm an author. I'm also an accounting professor and a certified life coach. I specialize in personal and small business finance and also fitness. I help people reach their goals. Now on this Empowering Women series, the premise of this show is to invite women on to come and share their stories. You know, we all go through life's journeys where we have struggles and success and failures and just experiences. And sometimes we just kind of keep them in ourselves to ourselves and we think that we're alone. Well, this is an open platform with no, no judgments for us to come on and kind of share our stories so that we can actually see that we're not alone. And I'm so excited today to be introducing my guest. This is Vanessa Webster, and actually I call her Sister Webster. I actually met Miss uh, Sister Webster. It's been about, oh gosh, 2016. So it's been about 12 years now, 12 to 14 years ago. Um, I actually met her in church and really what stood out to me with her was that she was really authentic. Like there was no pretense, there was no fakeness. It was real, like she was an upstanding person, you know, someone that was open and honest. And basically what you see is what you get. Now, um, Sister Webster is actually a mom. She's also a wife and she is a grandmother of nine children. And some of her hobbies includes arts and crafts. And one of the favorite things I love is her cooking. I forgot to mention that. How can I have not let off with that? All right, so she is an excellent cook. She actually um, has her own catering business. And if you, um, we'll talk more about that. But without further ado, I want to introduce to you and present to others, um, Sister Webster. How are you? Fine, how are you? I'm doing good, good to see you. It's good to see you too. Well, I um, want to thank you for coming on to the show. Thank you and for inviting me. I'm so excited, I'm like, wow. <laughs> So the, the title of this is basically, um, in, you know, letting go and basically, you know, what, how to, how to survive after having an empty nest. So first of all, kind of just tell us about, you know, your children, how many children you have and, and then just kind of lead into your story. Okay, Pia, before we get started with that, let me make a correction. I don't own my own catering business. I work for the one, but I do my catering on the side as well. Okay. Per okay. 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 Right. Um, introduction of my children. Well, I've got Reggie. Watkins, who said, Mom, I'm just Reggie Watkins. He's a, a established great actor in Hollywood. I love it. Okay. I'm very proud of him. Every time I turn the TV on, I look up sometimes. Sometimes in the middle of the night, I look up and there he is on the commercial. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> excited about uh, that. Uh, I have a daughter, Nia. She uh, Currently, she is an operations manager for Southwest Airlines in Chicago. So being the fact that she works for Southwest, mom can fly free. Oh, how fun. And is <laughs> I need in to start Southwest. start taking more. I'm sorry. I said in Southwest. I love Southwest. Two free bags. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I like that. You know, and so I mean, she's afforded me many times to go wherever I want to go. I'm just I stay busy, so I don't always leave. My husband's always telling me if I could fly anywhere, I'd be gone every single oh weekend. Oh my gosh, absolutely, <laughs> I agree with him. <laughs> so, and then I have TJ, my youngest, who is um, a new dad. Oh. He's the baby that left the nest finally after oh. I don't know how many times of returning. <laughs> <laughs> he works for Time Warner Cable and he is a I, like I said both of my sons I think they're just terrific dads, you know. My daughter is totally uh auntie everything. You know, okay. she will travel for just a day to come see the kids, you know, one oh, way wow. or the other. So that. Okay. And then I have two stepsons, Terrence and Adrian, one in South Carolina and one in Texas. And uh, they have children. And we're going to see them all soon, shortly, hopefully. So. <laughs> so now, was there ever a time when all the children were in your household at one time? Yes. This is when they were, I think they were 12 and 13 when the boys first came out here from Georgia. And all of the kids were together at that time. And I remember the thing that stood out the most to me because my kids are are like they're actually really a depiction of me. And they have we have this heart. I have stepbrothers and stepsisters, but we've never used the word step. That's my sister, or that's my brother. And so when my kids first met the boys, they said, they said, Oh, this is our stepbrother. And my oldest son said, No, no, we're brothers, you know, and it's been that way ever since. So <laughs> Love that. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk, uh, let's talk about you and your husband. So how long have you guys been married? Recently, we just found out 20 years. <laughs> Wait, what, do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you just found out? <laughs> okay. Uh, he's not real big on anniversaries, birthdays, and things like that. And so I just got to the point that we're like, oh, well, our anniversary's coming. You know, I know it's coming. And I've been so busy. Well, my son calls on June 27th, and he goes, happy anniversary, Mom. And I said, Oh, is that today? <laughs> and so we started.
started counting. I was, and, and somebody said, well, how many years have you been married? I said, I, I don't know. So we started counting back. And he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> he said, how did we miss that? I said, I don't know. <laughs> so, well, so, yeah, 20. But we've been together uh, 36. I've known him since I was 11 years old. So Really? Wow. Yes. That's your whole life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, wow. And I can tell you, and I say to all the ladies out there, I'm a living witness be careful what you pray for because you will get it if you wait long enough. Now wait, is that a good thing or a bad thing? What was it that you were praying for? Well, that's a good thing for me because I was praying for him. I was like, Lord, if you let me marry this man, I'll serve you for the rest of my life at 11. Uh, oh, really? Yes, yes. <laughs> I was okay. crazy about him then. Took him a while through the military and his bouts and all that other stuff to actually see, hmm, she actually is somebody I see. <laughs> so, okay, okay. So yeah, well, and you I will. I mean, you're only 11, right? <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> Okay, so cool. All right, so now tell us about the, the family dynamics because again, you're talking about letting go because a lot of times what we what we do is particularly as women, like, and I want you to kind of talk about this, like um, how is it that you kept your identity throughout the whole thing of rearing kids and then being a mom and then now all of a sudden your children are gone and then how do you, how did you maintain your identity or did you struggle with that? I, you know, to be honest, I did. Although I knew it was always there. Um, I was, I, I'm the kind of mom that's the mom that just, I want to be at the football games after school. I want to make the snacks for the friends, which our house was the the house for the boys to come over after football and summer school. They do their homework, go back to football practice. So I was mom, uh, caretaker, uh, cook, this and that biggest fan for so long. And they were my entire world. Even though I was married, they, my kids just, they just been my world, you know? And yeah. so when one by one, they started leaving. My, my two oldest kids uh, left earlier. They're 10 years apart from TJ, the youngest. Okay. okay. So it was a, it was a help because but as they got older, they were buying the tennis shoes and things for him, you know? Oh, so, wow. you know, they be, and, and to this day, all three of them are just thick as thieves. I mean, they check on each other. They do. I mean, are you doing this right? Are you doing that right? You know, one way or the other. So yeah, I kind of did lose my identity in the fact of just being mom. I was mom, 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 you know, and, and when finally TJ got ready to leave, I was miserable. I was just miserable. I just felt lonely. Um, I have a husband here, but uh, Mr. Webster is a bird of a different feather. <laughs> <laughs> Which men typically are, but we're going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So he, he's, he, you know, a lot, generally men are not the, they're not nurturing, you know, it's like, well, they're gone. No, I'm breaking the plate. That's his favorite thing. When they leave, I'm breaking the plate. You can't go back. You know, I, the door's open. If, if my child is outside and I know he needs me, I'm going to get, it, you know, one way or other. So it was just he and I, and I missed, you know, I didn't know what I was going to, I didn't know what to do. I was church secretary and I was working at the church. I was really busy into everything. And I actually started throwing myself more into that. I'd be, I was in, WA number two, the pastor's aid, choir, you know, all this other stuff, trying to keep busy just from being lonely, you know, with my son and um, with that son. And so I, I, think, I think I got a dog. I thought the dog would be okay too, you know, one way or the other. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to get a companion. Right? Uh, yeah. The dog had to go because her nails and hair cost more than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I, I can't I gotta take care of me, you know. So, <laughs> so I gave her to uh, this late little sweet lady around the corner, you know, and got back to that. Then I um, you know, I, it, there was a long period of time where I just felt like just nothing. I mean, I really did. I just felt like I'm just getting up, going to work. Um, my kids are gone. You know, I miss them. I want I wanted to talk to them every single day, and I would call the, my youngest son TJ. Every single day he will call to this day. He will call, you know, and um, my daughter, she's so busy. But you know what? I try to and I try to give them their space, because if, if you leave it to me, I'd be calling them every single day. Well, what's going on? How's this? How's this? How's that? You know, and I'm trying to give them their space because they are adults, you know, right, right. and and I did. My mom is like that. <laughs> so um, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to make sure that they knew I was here for them. And I get them sometimes asking me, well, mom, you don't call or I haven't heard from you. What's going on? You know, well, I figured if you want to call me, you call me, you know, <laughs> so that's why I leave it, you know, but I think they miss me not calling all the time too, you know? So, right. so now while they were growing up, did you actually work um, outside of the home or were you pretty much a stay at home mom? 
Well, I had started working. I was I was single. My first two children, I was single. Okay. And um, I I did work, and they were in daycare. But then my daughter had um, heart problems when she was born. And so she had to have some heart surgeries and things like that. So I was basically unable to work because I was back and forth to the hospital with her a lot. So I was at home. And then um, then as time went along, I did start working and they were in programs and things, you know, football, uh, Pop Warner, whatever, you know. So I wasn't a stay at home mom, but I was more a more home mom than both moms. <laughs> I'd be at work calling like, OK, uh, what's going on? You know, all during the day. So. OK. So then, so what advice do you have women, let's say, that are, you know, that are going to that? Because, you know, a lot of times, like I, I kind of led off into is we tend to do that as, as women is we tend to lose our identity based on, you know, being so like, I remember I was, I was Corey's mom, you know, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. wife or so-and-so's ex-wife or whatever. It's just like, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have your own identity and, and stay with who you are. So what advice do you have on that? Well, in, in the perspective to say this for me, I think everyone has always known me as Miss B. You could meet me one time and they'd say, oh, this is Vanessa Webster. Immediately would be, oh, that's Miss V. And mm -hmm. I have been Miss V since I was a little kid. You know, I'm just, I am who I am. Simple as that, you know. Yeah, and a lot of people thought, oh, she's arrogant. But um, as far as like losing your identity, and I did. Because, I, yeah, I'm Nia's mom, I'm Reggie's mom, or I'm TJ's mom. And he was a football football he one of the guys you know that was really big on the football team and he's the cutest thing and everybody would always say oh that's tj's mom you know that's tj's mom and i was like no i'm me you know yeah. and for a while there i really didn't think i was me i really didn't i mean i went through some depression i, I really could say that i went through some depression because for um a short time i went to therapy because i was thinking not um not just cutting this off but uh also in 1987 um before I was married to um, Mr. Webster, I had a son. I'm uh, 1985, not 87. 85, I had a son, and um, he died after a month old. Wow. And so I, uh, um, it took me a long time, you know, to yeah. get past that. And that's why I'm so close to my children. You know, I, I just every little thing I want to hang on to. And so for a while there, I, I, I don't think I had dealt with that. I really don't. And then when the empty nest syndrome came up and all these things started coming back, I was just feeling more and more like, well, what am I doing? I saw my friends, my sisters and brothers doing great things. And I was a church secretary. <laughs> so oh, I was like, that? Well, you know, I well, I thought it was going to be a stewardess. And that was another thing. After the kids left, I also went and applied for a job at Delta. And uh -huh. I got the interview and I went down there. But I didn't get the job because I was like, well, I'm going to travel. Because in high school, I did say that I was going to travel and be a stewardess, you know, and do all these things. So I was basically trying to do things to bring back me, you know, right. the me that I know. So, right. yeah. Now, but, now, let me ask you this. Now, you mentioned losing the son. Was this your first one and then you had the other two or was this in between? No, this was the third one after my two oldest. Okay. My two oldest. And then I had a son, uh, little Jeff, and, and he died. And so it really took years. I would like for years, I would always go back uh, to the cemetery and I would always make sure there's flowers and everything there, you know, I, but my, but I couldn't stop there because I still had my other children, you know, one wow. way or other. And thank God, because they still needed mom too, you wow. know? So okay. uh, that was a part of my depression for a little while, you know, yeah. really, you know, just thinking, what am I doing? I'm not doing anything that I want to do. And I knew I could cook. Everyone always said I could. I knew that. I learned from my grandmother, the best person. Okay. So I knew I could cook. So I just started, you know, making different dishes. I'm sorry. That's okay. Making different dishes and things. And also through all this, I picked up uh, crocheting again. And now I'm crocheting uh, uh, lap gams, lap blankets and things like that for people that, I mean, actually are going for at least $150. So, you know, wow. you can do all that stuff. I've spent a lot of, th a lot of time developing I just started doing things that I could do to make me happy, you know, and if it made me happy, it's making someone else happy, you know, and yeah. that's the one thing I really like to see other people happy. If you need something, I really will help you. Believe me. You know, yeah. I'm one of those people that's like, well, you know, they need food. And my husband's always saying, why are you the one going? To because they need the food. You know, it's just in my heart. You know, things happen in people's families and you and it's 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 my belief calling. My ministry is just a giving. And so I'll go and cook dinner and whatever, and just because I want to, you know. So right. right. Mm -hmm. now, now take us back to the um, time your first child went away. How was that for you? Because I mean, because you still had the other ones at home, 
Mm -hmm. So how was it letting go with that one, with with your first one? That was your, you know, your firstborn. It had to be hard. He, uh, it wasn't. He was he's my he was my third, but um, I don't know. Um, actually, and like a lot of people don't know, and I've never really shared uh, to a degree. But I was married, and uh, my husband at the time was a cocaine addict. Okay. And there was so much. There was just it was just so much <laughs> during that whole time, you know. So I was basically I'm, I'm trying to protect my children mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and keep this baby. And and just as all that happened, it just all came crushing down on me. You know, just, I just really was, I, I thought I was losing my mind for a little while there, you know, one way or the other. But when you look at the other children, and that's what I'm saying, that's how I got through that is because I looked through my, at my kids. They had so much potential. They still have so much potential. And they, those kids would like, mom, everything's going to be okay. You know, they're little. They're little oh, kids. They'd be like, Mom, right. everything is going to be okay. And Nia, would, uh, she had a certain way of like her little talk was, <laughs> it was all really proper at her young age, right? She said, oh, we're going to be just fine, mother. <laughs> so, <laughs> they kept me going. And then, you know, I I got into um, Pop Warner with my son, Reggie. And then, you know, Nia, she really didn't like a lot of ballet and all that stuff. She's more right. oratorical person. She's very, yeah, she's very um, intellectual. She's okay. a good writer too, uh, as well. So basically that's what just pulled me out of it. You know, and I had friends, I had a really, uh, really good friend um, who recently died. We went to uh, Bryman Nursing School together and I had not seen this girl in 30 years, but this is how I know that she was there for a reason for me. And you know, people come in your life for a reason and a season. Um, after 30 something years, I had not seen her, had not talked to her. And through social media, my brother saying, there's some lady trying to get a hold of you. She says her name is this. Do you know anybody like this? And I was like, well, yeah, I remember this lady from way back, you know, when. And she called me. She said, she said, well, I have cancer and I know I'm not going to die. She said, I'm going to die. But I was determined to find you before I left here. Mm -hmm. And I met I I got to see her last year. Just before uh, last year, I went out to visit her and saw her. And it was like we had never, ever left each other's side. But I, I know at that time, because yeah. during all that time with the baby and things like that, if I needed food or if I had no money, she would come and she would bring groceries. She would do whatever it was, you know, and just say, well, I'm just praying for you, you know, and keep on going. And yeah. so I say, you know, basically these people that come in your life, they're there for a reason and they last, you know, and they're, they're there to either help you get over something or, or you know, go with you through something. Right. And so that I had a lot of support. I had a support system. For okay. That. And that's important because, again, as you know, being like so and so's mom, or you like with you, you were three so and so's moms. Mm -hmm. You, know, you got to make sure that you keep yourself like, you know, I have friends now that are married, have new babies. I'm like, what are you doing for yourself? Like, you got to make sure, you know, because we tend to lose those those contacts with the people, you know, with our friendship. But we don't do things ourselves because we're so giving and giving to others that we don't give to ourselves. Did you yeah. find yourself in a situation? I did. I did. And, you know, I, and I realized. Some years later, there's more to life than just the children in here, you know. And another thing, you know, I was looking kind of old, you know. I was like, Good great, I'm not that old yet, you know, one way or the other. So you gotta start taking care of yourself. I think I think I was 40 years old when I even got my eyebrows done. Are you serious? <laughs> yes, I had never done anything. I don't think I even started wearing makeup till I was 30, <laughs> you know. Yes, I, and so I was like, well, wait a minute, I could put some makeup on and do this and that, you know. Um, I was never a gym person, but now I belong to the gym. Oh, and I can't. So, <laughs> so I, I've been out for a little while because it's just been a cold season and things like that. Another thing I remember, you know, being at home with your kids and it was just the four walls. I, I just thought, I thought I would, I remember when they were little, I thought I would never see outside of those four walls, you know, at nighttime, I'm reading a book, they're all asleep, you know, and you just, all you have is the four walls to keep you, right. going, you know, one way right. or the other, but you start doing things, you know, and then also they taught me that too, mom, what are you doing for you? You know, what are you going to, you know, are you going to get out and do this and do that, you know, pamper, you know, pamper yourself. Um, so I don't know. I, it's different for diff for every woman, but for me, uh, I prayed a lot, <laughs> right? Prayed a lot, you know, and I do read the Bible, you know, and I mean, you can read a quote or a daily whatever and think that's the end of it. 
but you actually have to go through that daily quote. You have to actually go and read that thing for yourself and study everything to get from the top to the bottom. So yeah. you're understanding it, you know, and it's, I mean, you can get words, but words don't do anything. You know, you got to put it into action. <laughs> so, so I put it into action. <laughs> All right. So you painted this picture, which I can totally understand where you have, you know, your, your children, they're small, you're involved in their lives, the football, there was no ballet, but your daughter, like you had all this involvement. So then transition us when they were older, you know, like high school about to graduate. So how did that work? You know, cause now they're about to leave the nest. Like, were you still pretty much just kind of, you know, going along with the, the regular mundane, you know, comfort zone? I was, I was. Yeah. I was, yes. Um, and my oldest son uh, lived with his dad for high school years. My thing was, and that that was very, very hard. When we came from uh, San Jose to here, to uh, San Diego, Oceanside, uh, because my oldest son, my oldest two children, their father was in San Jose. And my son was not a military type, like Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster is oorah gung-ho, you know. Yeah. He had his own spirit you know, that way. And another thing is that I believe, I truly believe that every son needs to know his dad. Absolutely. And as hard as that was, I said, you go ahead and stay here and do high school with your dad. Not that I wasn't down in San Jose once a month driving back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> let me do this. Let me do that. You know, but it was a good thing for him because um, he needed to know who his dad was and know about him other than just me on that side. And we have a great relationship today. So I say with him, um, he was gone earlier, so it no, wasn't no, that he was. This. Was that as, at his request that he go live with his dad, or was that you saying you need to go live with your dad? No, we talked about it. He liked the schooling there. I asked him what he wanted to do, and he told me, "Yeah, I want to stay here with dad." You know, okay. so and and for a lo long time, I, I felt guilty. I really did. I, I thought, you know, because he, he's uh, Reggie's like a uh, no nonsense, serious, to the point. They tell it like it is person, you know, and he does. He's not like, you know, warm, warming to approach, you think, you know, because he's always speculating. OK, what, what's what's up, you know, but for a long time, I felt like I had let him down for letting him stay with his dad and not being a part of those high school years. And Ooh. I felt like I did. I did. I felt like, you know, maybe he didn't you know, maybe he doesn't doesn't forgive me for leaving him there with his dad. But I asked, you know, if that was what you wanted to do. But then later on, he explained to me, he says, mom, you know what? I may, I may not be like, I'm just a different type of person, but I love you. You know, I love you and love you to pieces, you know? And, and, I, and I hear people say all the time, oh, he talks about you all the time. So I had to get that little guilt off of me too, because I thought, you know, maybe I did something wrong there. You know, well, let me ask you this because you, you said you're feeling guilty. It was there a time that he wanted to come back and then you're like, no, you need to stay there. Or what, where was the guilt coming from? I I couldn't really answer that because no, he didn't ever say, well, already I want to come back because he was always able to come here and go, you know, summers or whatever, whatever you wanted to do. Yeah. So I, I don't know where it actually basically came. It, it was just within me. You know, I, I, I had so many years of, of being, feeling like I was not the best. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, in my childhood, it was more so like, you're number, you're number two, you know, you're not going to be anything <laughs> in my childhood. That's how some of it was, but praise God, I turned out to be just exactly what I'm supposed to be, who I was in the first place, you know, but I had a lot of, yeah, I had a lot of uh, insecurities at, at being young because, uh, you know, a lot of things like the young girls have nowadays, uh, Oh, I was a little too dark. My hair was, I didn't have nice hair, you know. I mean, I didn't know how to dress, this and that. So, I, you know, I kind of was like, uh, whatever, you know. But I got past that, you know. Me is enough. I started, as I got older, after I had my first son, my daughter, after I lost my son, I looked in the mirror and I was like, you know what? I don't want to be anybody else. I am exactly who I am. I mean, I hear people say, I want to look like this or I should look like this. I want to get this. I, I don't. I'm I'm pretty happy with who I see in the mirror, and that's enough for me, you know. So. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. All right. So, then, so now, okay, go ahead. No, finish. And on. then my daughter, she lived. She was here, and she had a life of her own. She was a spirit. I mean, she was at a spirit. All the activities and everything in school. So I knew she was going to be fine. She went away to San Francisco um, City College, San Francisco State, I think it was San Francisco College. And um, she lived up there. She got to the to the. That's why they're city people. 
They do not like the country. <laughs> they are city people. They like the nightlife, you know? And so um, when she went, but she actually was going with her grandmother. She lived with her grandmother. So I wasn't okay. really so worried about her, you know, being up there. She's very, very independent, um, intelligent, intelligent girl. And so I wasn't so much worried about her leaving and being out there because she can handle herself. I mean, she's like this now. Listen, <laughs> it's either the it's either this, 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 or this or not. I can take myself to McDonald's. You know, that's her. <laughs> but so I wasn't really worried about her, but I was worried about TJ. Because TJ was home the longest. I did everything. Basically, I think because he was the youngest. And uh, I'll share a little story with you. When he was six months old, we had moved to Denver, Colorado. And I was working for a company. This is the first time I actually had been with my kids in the snow and had to drive in the snow. And I had a car and um, I was picking him up from daycare and uh, in, in the worst area where it was down in Denver off of Colfax Avenue. I picked him up. My car broke down. And I called my aunt at the time who was who I was working with. And she said, the safest thing for you to do is to get on the bus, come back to the office and we'll take a taxi home. Okay. And okay. so I got his stroller. We had got to the bus stop. I sat him down for one second, one second, turned around to fold up the stroller. And a woman came along, picked him up and started running. OK, Are you serious. Yes. <laughs> And it was like in front of this liquor store and I, I forgot everything. I just was running in the ice and there were some guys that were at the liquor store that saw what had happened and they caught up to her and knocked her down, took the baby and everything one way or the other. And, and at that time, I think uh, people, they, what the police told me is that people were selling children for drugs at that mm -hmm. time in that area. And I was just lucky, you know, I, I could care less about the person, or anything else. I mean, I don't think I ran so fast in my life to try to get him back. And so he's been the closest to me. I I, I, I get stressed, I get nervous when I'm thinking, what's racket? What's happening? What's happening? You know? And so when he was getting ready to go away, I was really afraid because I didn't want anything to happen to him. Yeah. You know, he's carefree and like, you know, happy go lucky. I'm like, you gotta be paying attention to people. You know, you don't know what's gonna happen. So I I I held on to him a little too tight, really I did. And as women too, also I find out um, we can't really hold on to our boys like that because we're, we, and, and, and I found that out the hard way because I want to, well, no, you got to do this. No, this woman's not good. You're not going to get this. I was always saying, you know, uh, nobody's going to be good enough for him. Right. Right. Of course. But that's, that's his choice. And, and, and me, I had to let, let him do what he needed to do. But I just, I want, I was controlling TJ for so long, you know, every time, every time he needed a penny. Okay, here, you know. Well, well, yeah, let me ask you this because see, you're actually married now. So how was that with your husband? Because men are typically different with their sons, you know. It was not good. <laughs> <laughs> it was not good. You know, I mean, I, I and truthfully, yes, I would be quietly sending him money, doing this and doing that, you know, one way or the other. Because if, if, if Mr. Webster knew, it wouldn't have been uh, too cool, you know. But my also, my son and my daughter uh, mm -hmm. both said, Mom. He's a grown man. You got to let him go and let him fall. He, and, and I would be, but you guys don't, we don't understand. We do understand. You have to understand. Let him fall. He has to be completely down and then he'll get himself back up. Stop picking him up. And he knew, he knew, TJ knew 100%. Okay, well, I can't pay this bill. Let me call my mom, you know, one way or the other. <laughs> and so I finally got to the point of where, you know, I woke up one day, I think it was a couple of years, about four, about three years ago. And I was like, wait a minute. You you got a baby on the way and this and that one way or the other. I can't afford you. I can only, I'm not working for you. I'm working for me. You know what I mean? And I basically work to shop. You know, so I was like, you know, I have a few bills that I have to pay, but I mean, I just like to do things around the house. So right. I finally realized, you know, I'm not doing you any good. I'm doing you a disservice by hanging on to you, uh, paying this, paying that. I said sometimes, you know, you have to fall. And and as I was reminded, you uh -huh. fell and you got back up. You know, awesome. and that's so it, it wasn't nice. It was not nice at all. You know, we had a lot of arguments, a lot of arguments during that I time. Know. Now, were you feeling guilty about that? Because I mean, because now I'm pretty sure he played that guilt trip, you know, with yeah. you. Because you mm -hmm. also, you know, you were babying him and pretty much, you know, and then also and, you cut it off like like that. And now mm -hmm. he's not going to be happy about that. So did he try to do the guilt trip and make you feel guilty? Yes, about? yes. Yes. <laughs> and I was too. And I was like, I was crying. Oh Lord, my baby just don't love me anymore. And this and that, you know, one way or the other. But um, when it's all said and done, I guess it was the best thing for him. And he knows that because his, um, his, his family is secure. 
he is a good family man. You know, he's got, well, because, you know, and he finally figured out, well, I got to go get two jobs. And I'm saying, most people, TJ, I remember one time he said, mom, we don't have any groceries. I need to get groceries. I got to pay this. I got to pay that. That would be always his preface. I got to get this. I got to get that. I don't have that. Okay, let me go get you get some groceries. I'm not going to let you guys start with the other. I said, TJ, most men, when their family's hungry, go out and get another job. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so now he has another job. So he has his two jobs and he's doing what he needs to do. You know, and now now he'll say, well, mama, do you need something? You know, which I love, you know, wow. that's the thing you want to get to. Well, do you need something? You know, right. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. So then how are you like, I know you were kind of like hiding this from your husband, but I don't think you really were. <laughs> I don't think you really were because he had to know. So yeah. then so when you finally woke up, like, was it literally like that? Like you just woke up one day and like, what the heck am I doing? Yes, it was. It was because I'm sitting here going, you know, and then and the tension between he and I was getting worse and worse, you know, because he and, and I didn't see it like like most men see it. You know, I didn't see it like, well, he's a grown person. You know, he's a man. Let him be a man because I'm not a man. I, yeah. I All I see is mom. All I see is like, oh, no, I just can't. I can't think about him being out there hungry, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but. Like I said, I, I, after I realized that I was listening to a sermon one Sunday and I know I don't know if you remember uh, Brother Lawrence Vaughn. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. he, yeah. So I still talk to him from now and then. And okay. he was reminding me of a sermon one time. And he said, you know what? You're working and knocking yourself out, trying to make something to save it for these kids. He said, don't you remember Pastor Price said one time, don't leave them nothing. Let them work and get it on their own. Spin up everything. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and that's exactly what it was. I was like, I am just working and spending this money. I said, I don't, I don't even have time to do anything for me, you know, one way or the other, because I'm busy doing it for everybody else. So um, my husband was, I think he was real happy then because, you know, he was, he, he just wasn't happy for a period. He really wasn't, you know, um, to be honest, we hardly talked, you know, mm -hmm. we hardly spoke. Uh, it was like, hi, bye, here's your food, you know, this and that one way or the other. And in and, and the minute he said something about TJ, I was on the defense quickly. <laughs> <laughs> if he said anything about Nia Reggie, I, I was on the defense, you know, one way. Right. Those are my kids, you know. Well, actually, they're ours. <laughs> so, all right, he so just now, had a different way. <laughs> now, tra now transition us because now all of them are gone. All right. So now how is it with just you and your husband? Because that's another transition because now you got to re- you reconnect with your husband, like the person that you've been with forever. But, you know, there was time frames. I know, you know, I was only married for a short period of time, but still there are times where you're individual going about your separate lives. And, mm -hmm. you know, particularly he's working and then you're with the children. So now you're together. How is mm -hmm. that? Well, I revisited getting a dog again. <laughs> <laughs> and he shut that down real quick. Okay, No dog. <laughs> I was like, well, you're you, he. Uh. My husband does RC car racing. He's in real estate and uh, uh, does a lot of flipping of properties and things. So he's okay. gone a lot, you know, okay. back and forth with the races and this and that. That's his hobby. That's his outlet. That's no matter what. If you can't find him at one o'clock in the morning, he's at the racetrack. Okay. Right. <laughs> racing those cars. And so um, he's got that time. And then because I work so much with the catering, I uh, we have a lot of like uh, UCSD um, uh, Camp Pendleton, where they have big orders and things like that. So I stay busy with that. We come and go, you know, but I have learned, I, whereas I used to cook a meal every single night because I was like, I want to make sure everybody has something to eat and everything. Now it's like, you're lucky if you get it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You know, <laughs> they, He says when he comes home, uh, there's no food in here. Well, there was a time he was complaining and getting upset because I was keeping all the snacks in here because I know TJ and the kids want to come and get this and get that. The boys would come over and so I would load up, right? right. No, I don't keep snacks and chips and cookies anymore. You know? so what about for the grandchildren? Uh, well, they the ones that are here, their mom is vegetarian, holistic. <laughs> And my son is trying to get on that too, one way or other. So they're they're doing earth grown, healthy things. I mean, and they don't allow uh, my granddaughter to have cookies and chips and things like that during the day. Often, I mean, she barely gets it. So they have fruits. They have like maybe you know uh, uh, the the little healthy stuff that they have. So I don't keep a lot of that in here. And another thing, if I keep a lot of chips and cookies here, they disappear. That's because Mr. Webster and the only person in this house is him and me. So how in the world can 
a bag of potato chips end up in a knot. And he said, I don't know what happened to it. You're the only one here. <laughs> so, it opens up. It means, you know, sometimes one or two turns into a whole bag. It, it just yeah. happens that way. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's us. But, you know, what we have done is um, we started going back to date night. Finally. Nice. You know? so, okay. It okay. may be on a Wednesday. It may be on a Tuesday. It could be breakfast, you know. But we started going back to that. We did get a motorhome. And we we're missing the time in that. I love the motorhome. I didn't think I was going to like it at first. You know. Really? Why? Why? I was, I was, I don't know. I just thought, I don't think I really want to be in a motorhome. It's too small. This is, but this is a double wide thing. And when you open it up, it's like, you're just at home, you know? So I can't wait to get in it now. Whenever he says, oh, we're going to take the mobile home. I hurry up, get the groceries <laughs> and get comfortable. I can watch movies in there. You know, we like going on the beach, uh, on Camp Pendleton yeah. and stay in the weekend there for, uh, for that. You know, it's just, it's just relaxing, you know? So that we, um, he's going to the gym with me every so often now too. He, oh. he goes, I go to Planet Fitness. He goes to 24 Hour Fitness, you know. So, okay, okay. but uh, he's been going with me, you know, one way or the other, and we're just doing it. It's, it's good. We we've, we've had a chance now. Everything that was the children growing up is no longer. This house is an adult house, you know. So we finally um, redecorated and, and uh, I mean, got wood floors. We just did everything, you know, because when you, when you got kids, you know, you got carpet and all this other stuff, and you got wood floors. And I ha I used to have a lot of knickknacks. Um, African art, uh, figurines and things just all over. Right. Less is, I found out less is more. <laughs> you know? And recently I was just telling my kids too. I mean, I don't know why. And maybe that was a part of me. I've collected so much China and dishes, you know, just because that's what I would, I mean, there was nobody here. So I was like, Oh, let me just go, you know, look at this and that. I've collected so much of that stuff. And I realized yeah, um, about a month ago, you know what? these kids aren't going to take this stuff <laughs> when I'm gone, you know, yeah. and um, Terry will probably say, give it to the Goodwill or whatever else. So I said, you know, I told them I have several tea sets. You pick one that you guys want. The rest of them I'm either giving away or I'm, I'm putting on eBay, something, you know, because wow. it's, it's something that you need. I mean, I use everything in my house. I don't, when it comes to dishes and things like that, you know mm -hmm. how you have the regular dishes for weekdays and you have right. the china for special. No, I use my china and things every day because it's just there. I mean, why have it there just to sit and look at? You know, when people come over here, my my motto is to make sure they're as comfortable as possible. And I don't serve them on paper plates. They, my friends always go, don't you know about the dishwasher? Yes, I just realized the dishwasher worked this year, as a matter of fact. <laughs> But do you, do you see the irony of that? Like, for instance, you know, you were letting go of your children and now you're letting go like the knickknacks and everything and you're mm -hmm. coming. Around. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. That's about my, I'm just much happier in that way, you know, for because for a little bit there, I was like, when we had an instance um, because I, I'm truly uh, a Christian and I truly mm -hmm. believe in God and I know that God has always been there for me. Mm -hmm. And I tried to raise my children like that. Well, um, I know that I did. Their beliefs are different than mine now. And I was really upset when my son said, well, you know, it's, it, it, I think it was something my granddaughter had said that she thought she, she didn't really want to go to church. So she okay. started going to church and everything. And, and she's now learning about God. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm trying to explain to her, but you know, I can't push my religion on them. I'm hoping that, right. you know, they understand and realize that I'm not going to change that. And now I'm always going to say prayer is the key. For me, you know, it yeah. has been for me. And yeah. um, so that was a little different. And, and I was a little hurt by, you know, a conversation that we had about, you know, God. And I think uh, something about the fact that, well, I think the church is brainwashing the kids, you know. Uh, I was a little hurt by that because I'm thinking, well, how can that be? You know, uh, I'm not trying to push this on them. But if you come here I <laughs> and I don't see any reason, like I tell my, my kids all the time. Well, I'm going to pray over my food, whether I'm in a restaurant or in the house or whatever. And I said, here's my deal. I don't know who cooked it. I don't know where it's been one way or the other. And I want to thank God after I ate it that I'm still alive. <laughs> right, right, so right. I see a reason for prayer. They may not, but I do. You know, so. Right. And, and I think once you lay down that foundation, particularly the strong foundation, they may, you know, go away, come back or whatever or, or change it, which is OK. But I think mm -hmm. if you lay that foundation is strong, it's, it's steady. It's in them. Yes, I mean, yes. Because they know, you know, and and Richie will say, "Mom, I, you, I think a month, two months ago, he says, "Mom, you know what? 
God is really watching out for me. I, look where he's, he's on top of cloud nine now. You know what I mean? All the things that was he was being hindered from doing before. And I think that was a lot that had to do with me because I was the one trying to, uh, you know, fix everything. <laughs> <laughs> and now that he's his own man, you know, I mean, yeah. he's taking care of his bills. He's taking care of his car note. I mean, he's getting his family to here, here, here and there. You know, it's his responsibility. So I, I'm loving that, you know, as as was my son, Reggie. You know, he he's oh, my gosh, he's the it's, it's amazing to see your kids be parents. It really is. Because okay. all the I'm things that you, no, no time soon. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But when you get there, grandparenting. Best feeling oh. in the world. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. And another thing, when they were little too, and as the kids were here, I'll be running around behind them. I'd be so tired during the day running around, picking up everything. Every time they drop something, pick it up, pick it up. I have learned with these grandkids when they came mm -hmm. yesterday, mm -hmm. all the pots, uh, the pots and pans were out. The the, the uh, what was it? The plastic stuff was out. Kendrick's, my little one, was grabbing things. I said, when they leave, I'll clean it up. <laughs> so, <laughs> when they oh, left my house, looked oh, like a yeah. hurricane. But they were happy and so was I. I wasn't running around crazy trying to pick it up. So. Oh, that's neat. It's neat how we go through the different different roles of life. And, and again, it culminates mm -hmm. to being the grandma where you actually get to see everything come to fruition, which is great that now you're you're in the space where you can actually enjoy that. Instead of just, yeah. What is it? I mean, I understand that you want like a clean house, right? You know, you want mm -hmm. to, it doesn't have to be spick and span for what? What does that really say? Yeah, that's it. That's one thing. Uh, I uh, My sister is like that because I'm like, Oh, I visited her house and I was like, every single can of soup is lined up <laughs> in the proper place and and highlighted. The teas, everything is in its place. It looks like a magazine, you know? And I'm like, uh, no, I don't think I want to go that far. I like a clean house and it will get clean when I get to it, you know, one way or the other. But uh, I don't think I'll go that far. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I think it's just, it's, you know, important to focus on what's important because when you're on your deathbed, what's going to be important? Is it going to be mm -hmm. the lined up vegetables? Is it going to be, you know, this, that, and the other? Or is it going to be the family members that are surrounding you? you know? mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. important. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, great. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to um, share with us regarding, you know, letting go with, with the children? I really do appreciate you, you know, being open and honest with, you know, mm -hmm. with, um, with me, with sharing your story. But is there anything else you want to say? No, I just, like I say, I would encourage, I know this is about empowering women. I would encourage you to understand we do have to let go at some time. And it be, it's, behooves us to do it earlier than later because yeah. we hinder our kids from being all they can be. Although, you know, I mean, I, I send my, I used to send my kids a letter a month just to let them know I, I encourage them. I love them. I think that they're doing great and this and that, you know, they are going to be who they are. But sometimes we do have to let go. Eventually, we will have to let go because right. they are grown, you know, and you can't you can't control them. You know, you can only give your opinion and they can take it or leave it, you know. And I found also with me letting go and not being so tight on them, um, they're, they're quicker to call me and say, hey, mom, you know, this is going on. This is going on, you know, whatever, you know. And I've had I'll, for one thing, I've always had a good even with my stepsons. I've always had a good relationship with them where they can call and say, well, this, 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 this and that, you know, and the other. And I will encourage them until the day I die. So, you know, it, it's, it's really a blessing to have them be able to call you and say, well, mom and my daughter, my daughter, especially she will, you know, whatever she's feeling low or she's feeling like this or this or that. She'll call me mom. I really feel like this, you know, and I will just I just want to encourage her. I'll just call her and talk to her, you know, and her day gets better, you know, one way or there. And if it's something I can't fix, I'm sure going to pray about it. And she knows that, you know, one way or other. But um, I, I, I actually feel fortunate and blessed to have the children that I do have. I really I just other than being overbearing, I've really <laughs> never had a real problem out of them, really. <laughs> and, and, you know, a lot of parents can't say that. You know? Right. And, and I'm fortunate and I'm blessed for that one way or the other. Now they may have done stuff that I didn't know about you know, later because <laughs> I'm finding out some things TJ was doing when he was 11 years old. I'm like, what? <laughs> and that was probably the best, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, it was just a pleasure being on here talking with you and everything. And good to see you again. I'm really, really excited to see your book. Reading. Oh, thank you so much. So now I know like if people want to get in contact with you, I know you said, you know, I know you work for Felix, but you also do do some catering. So if people want to get in contact with you, what do you, how do you, how do you expect they do that? Um, you can email me. Uh, also, I have an email, uh, uh, Vanessa, 
It's msvee2003 at aol.com. Or you can uh, contact Creative Flavors Catering in Carlsbad uh, for further information. Okay, great. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, I guess we'll end it for today. And guys, please share this information because this is what to share some really good, you know, especially I love the fact that you talked about letting your kids go and ironically, you know, not so ironically, all of a sudden you start letting go of other things as well because we mm -hmm. do tend to hoard on to things and you got to just ask yourself why, you know, what mm -hmm. is the reason? All right, so please do share this and um, join me next week when I have an, another live coming up. I think it's on Monday. We had a cancellation on uh, the this Thursday, but we do have another show coming on Monday. So just stay tuned to my fan page. And again, Sister Webster, you always yeah. be suspicious to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but thank right. you so much for coming on. Thank you for sharing your story. And um, thank I you. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.